In this video, we will be doing u substitution with definite integrals. If you don't know how to do u substitution with indefinite integrals, or you haven't watched my video for lesson 6.9 part one yet, I would recommend that you watch that one first. The big change with definite integrals versus indefinite integrals is that when you change the variable of integration, so when you swap out a du for that dx, you must also change the limits of integration, so the upper and lower bounds. So for instance, when we change this example a, when we switch this over to a du, we can no longer use the bounds 0 and 1. We're going to have to have different bounds. So now I'm going to explain exactly how we do that. First, we're going to treat this like indefinite integration, and we need to set something equal to u. In this case, I'm going to set 4x cubed minus 1 equal to u, because I know that that is inside another function. It's inside another cube function. So we will say let u equal 4x cubed minus 1, and then we take the derivative. So du dx will be equal to 12x squared. Then we can move the dx over to the other side. So we know that du is equal to 12x squared dx. And we can see that we have a 12x squared and a dx in our original integral. So that is going to work very well. Now for now, I'm going to leave the upper and lower limits blank just for now. And then I'm going to show you what to do with that later. But we have a negative over here and then 4x cubed minus 1. That's all cubed. And then that is times 12x squared dx. Now we start swapping things out, and we can actually keep the bounds on here because we haven't changed the variable of integration yet, but now we're going to start swapping things out. Instead of having 12x squared dx, we're going to write a du, and instead of having 4x cubed minus 1 cubed, we're going to have negative u cubed. So this is where we need to change the bounds because we have now shifted from dx to du. When x is equal to 0, what is u? This is the problem that we are trying to solve. So we take this equation right up here. We take u is equal to 4x cubed minus 1, and we plug in 0 for x. u is equal to 4 times 0 cubed minus 1, which is negative 1. Therefore, when x is equal to 0, u is equal to negative 1. So negative 1 is our new lower bound. And then we need to evaluate our new upper bound. When x is equal to 1, u is equal to what? Well, we take our equation for u again, and we plug in x equaling 1. That's 4 minus 1, or 3. So when x is equal to 1, u is equal to 3. Now, this becomes a problem that we need to solve using the fundamental theorem of calculus. But before we do that, I'm actually going to pull the negative outside, just to make it a bit easier. Now I'm going to evaluate this using the fundamental theorem. So this is really equal to, and then I need to take the antiderivative, which is u to the fourth over 4 with that negative sign out front. And I'm evaluating that at negative 1 and at 3. So I have that big negative out front, and then I need to substitute in 3. So if I have 3 to the 4th over 4 minus negative 1 to the 4th over 4, that is going to give me my answer. And then I can simplify, and that is negative 80 fourths, or negative 20. In part b, we are evaluating the integral from negative 3 to 1 of this function right here with respect to x. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set u equal to 2x squared plus 3. Then I will take the derivative. So du dx is going to be equal to 4x. And then I can move the dx to the other side, which would get me du is equal to 4x dx. Now I need to get 4x dx on the end of my original equation so that I can do that swap out. Now I have 8x dx, but, and I can easily get that to 4x dx if I just pull a 2 out. So that's what I'm going to do. And at this point, I am still keeping my x bounds on because I'm still working with x. I have not made the switch to u yet. So then I have the integral from negative 3 to 1 of negative 2 over 2x squared plus 3 squared times 4x dx. So I've just separated this out into two different parts that I can swap stuff out. So now I'm going to put in du for 4x dx, and I'm going to put in u for 2x squared plus 3. And this is where I need to change my bounds because now I am working with u instead of x. So when x is equal to negative 3, what is u? To find that, I'm going to use this equation right up here. And I'm going to say u is equal to 2 times negative 3 squared plus 3, which is 21. So when x is equal to negative 3, u is equal to 21. So 21 is my new lower bound. And then I need to find when x is equal to 1, which was my previous upper bound, what is u? 
So then I take u is equal to 2 times 1 squared plus 3, which is equal to 5. So 5 is my new upper bound. Now, there's something about this that I really don't like. I don't like that my lower bound is on the top and my upper bound is on the bottom. The bigger number should be on top. So to correct that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it, but then what I need to do is put the negative sign on the outside when I do that. Then I have negative integral from 5 to 21 of negative 2u to the power of negative 2 du. Now I'm going to pull out a negative 2 as a constant multiple. And then since I have a negative 1 out here already, negative 1 times negative 2 is just going to make a 2. So we have 2 times the integral from 5 to 21 of u to the power of negative 2 du. Perfect. Now this just becomes a problem with the fundamental theorem of calculus that I need to evaluate. So I have 2 as a big parentheses here. And then what is the antiderivative of u to the power of negative 2? Well, that is u to the power of negative 1 over negative 1. And we are evaluating that at 5 and 21. To make this a bit simpler to understand, this is really negative 2 over u evaluated at 5 and 21. So the first thing we do is plug in 21. So we have negative 2 over 21. And then we subtract plugging in 5. So minus negative 2 over 5. This is really negative 2 21sts plus 2 fifths. And if you're on the AP exam and all of your answer choices are simplified, you would have to simplify this fraction. If you're on a free response question, though, it's completely fine just to leave it like this. Part C says find the integral from 2 to 9 of 2x times 5e to the power of x squared plus 2 dx. In this case, I'm going to set u equal to x squared plus 2 because that is one of my powers. And I will see if that works. Let u equal x squared plus 2. Then I will take the derivative and I get that du dx is equal to 2x. Move the dx over to the other side and you get that du is equal to 2x dx. Now, if I start rearranging stuff in this equation, if I bring the 2x over here, I will have 2x dx in this equation. For now, I'm going to keep my x bounds the same because I haven't done anything to change those. I have not plugged in the du quite yet. In the next step of work, this is when it is time to start plugging things in. It's time to start doing the substitution. So we know that 2x dx is equal to du. So this is going to become du. And then x squared plus 2, we can plug in u for that. So we have 5e to the u du. And then we need to figure out what are our new bounds. So when x is equal to 2, what is u? We're going to need to use this equation right here that relates x and u. So when x is equal to 2, u is equal to 2 squared plus 2, which is 6. So 6 is our new lower bound. And then when x is equal to 9, u is equal to 9 squared plus 2. So 81 plus 2, or 83, u is equal to 83. So 83 is the new upper bound. Then we use the fundamental theorem to evaluate this. And notice that when we do this, we don't actually ever have to plug x squared plus 2 back in for u. That is because when we switch the bounds, that's just not something that we have to do. We can just evaluate straight away here. So the antiderivative of 5e to the power of u is just 5e to the power of u, since e to the u is its own derivative, and 5 is just the constant multiple. And we are evaluating that at 6 and 83. So first we will have 5e to the power of 83 and then minus 5e to the power of 6. And if you want to, you could simplify that a bit by factoring out a 5e to the power of 6. And in that case, you would get e to the power of 77 minus 1. So either one of those would be a valid answer. In part D, we're going to be working with some trig. This is going to be a u substitution one. So we need to figure out what are we going to substitute for u. Well, we could either say that u is equal to the cosine of x or the sine of x. When you have two trigs, it doesn't matter which one you set equal to u. I'm going to say that u is equal to the sine of x. Then when we take the derivative, we get that du dx is going to be equal to cosine of x. And then if we multiply both sides by dx, we get that du is equal to cosine of x dx. And we are going to be able to easily swap that out because we have a cosine of x and a dx. So then when we rewrite this, we are still working with our x bounds because we haven't fully transitioned over to u yet. And we have sine of x times cosine of x dx. Now we are going to swap out u with sine of x and cosine of x dx. We have just determined that that is du. So now we are going to leave our bounds blank because this is where we're transitioning over to u. We have u du. Now we need to figure out our bounds. So when x is equal to pi over 4, our lower bound, what is u? 
Well, when x is equal to pi over 4, that means that u is equal to the sine of pi over 4. And this is rad 2 over 2. So u is equal to rad 2 over 2. That is our lower bound, rad 2 over 2. And then we need to find our upper bound. When x is equal to pi, what is u? Well, u is equal to the sine of pi, which is 0. Now, I don't like this because my upper and lower bounds are not where they should be. We have the lower bound on top. The smaller number is on top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap that around. I'm looking for the integral from 0 to rad 2 over 2, and then I just stick a negative out front of u du. Now we need to evaluate this using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we have a big negative outside on the front, and then what is the antiderivative of u? Well, that is u squared over 2, and we are evaluating that at 0 and rad 2 over 2. So then first we plug in rad 2 over 2. So we have rad 2 over 2 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2. And we do have that big negative outside the front of everything. And then we can simply evaluate. This is equal to 0. And then rad 2 over 2 squared, that's going to be 2 over 4, or 1 half divided by 2. So we have negative 1 half divided by 2. That is really negative 1 fourth. So negative 1 fourth is our answer. Part E says find the antiderivative from 1 to 8 of 1 over 2x minus 2 dx. First thing we need to do is identify u. u, in this case, is x minus 2. Then we take the derivative. du dx is going to be equal to 1 because the derivative of x minus 2 is 1. And this means that du is equal to dx. That is a nice, simple swap out. So at this point, we can actually go straight to plugging in our u, which means that we are no longer dealing with our x bounds. So we have 1 over 2u du. Now let's figure out our bounds. When x is equal to 1, u is going to be equal to negative 1, because we have 1 minus 2, that's negative 1. And when x is equal to 8, u is equal to 8 minus 2, or 6. So we're really dealing with the integral from negative 1 to 6. Now I'm going to pull out a 1 half, and that's 1 over u du left on the inside. Now we can evaluate using the fundamental theorem. So we have a big 1 half out on the front, and then we are evaluating, and then the antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. We are evaluating that at negative 1 and at 6. So first we take the natural log of the absolute value of 6, or just the natural log of 6, because 6 is positive as it is, and then we say minus the natural log of the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. So minus the natural log of 1. The natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So this goes away, and we are left with the natural log of 6 over 2. There's our answer. Here's another integral that we're going to evaluate. This is the last definite integral problem that we will do. First thing is we need to identify what is u. So we see that we have this big function, 2 times the natural log of x minus 2, stuck inside the function that is being squared. So we will let u be equal to 2 times the natural log of x minus 2. Then when we take the derivative, we get du dx is equal to 2 times 1 over x, or just 2 over x. Then we move the dx over to the other side, and we get that du is equal to 2 over x dx. And we can see that we're going to be able to do something like 1 over x dx. So we just need to get rid of the 2 now. So this is really 2 dx over x. So if we just divide both sides by 2, we will be able to get rid of the 2. So then we have 1 half du is equal to dx over x. So now I'm just going to do a bit of rewriting here. I'm still keeping on my x bounds because we are still dealing with x. And then we are going to have this entire thing, 2 times the natural log of x minus 2 squared times dx over x, just transitioning the x to that other one. And that, that is exactly the same. These two are equivalent. But now we can easily swap out the dx over x for 1 half du, and we can easily swap out this for u. Now we need to switch around the bounds. So let's first do the lower bound. When x is equal to 1, let's plug that in. u is equal to 2 times the natural log of 1 minus 2. The natural log of 1 is just 0, so this is just negative 2. u is equal to negative 2. This means that negative 2 is our new lower bound. And then we have when x is equal to e squared, what is u? So then we take 2 times the natural log of e squared minus 2. That is 2 times 2, which is 4 minus 2 is 2. 
So u is equal to 2. So now we have this nice thing that we are evaluating. The very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a 1 half, and then we have 1 half times the integral of negative 2 to 2 of u squared du. Now we evaluate using the fundamental theorem. So 1 half is our big constant multiple, and then the antiderivative of u squared is u cubed over 3. We are evaluating that at negative 2 and 2. So first we have 2 cubed over 3, and then that is minus negative 2 cubed over 3. This is 1 half times 8 thirds plus 8 thirds. So 1 half times 16 thirds, which is really just 8 thirds. So 8 thirds is our answer.